So this is a short video about the book on India by the scholar Al B. Rooney. If you want to watch the long video, I encourage you to do so, but I hope that this one will be more concise and short for those who don't have the time or inclination to watch the full one. I can just cover some main points. So Al B. Rooney divides Hindus into two kinds, educated and uneducated Hindus. He says that the beliefs between the two differs in every nation, for the former strive to conceive abstract ideas and define general principles, while the uneducated do not pass beyond the apprehension of the senses and are content with derived rules without caring for details, especially in questions of religion and law, regarding which opinions and interests are divided. So the uneducated just kind of hear things and take things at face value without, uh, which can sometimes be totally wrong or manipulative and not know the truth of the matter. The second point is that the Hindus believe with regard to God that he is one eternal without beginning and end, acting by free will, almighty, all wise, living, giving life, ruling, and preserving all who in his sovereignty is unique beyond all likeness and unlikeness, and that he does not resemble anything nor does anything resemble him. So this sounds very similar to Islamic theology. It's very close, but you may even be incredulous if you talk to Hindus that most of them will actually agree with you if they're educated. I have spoken with Hindus. They don't disagree with anything that I say about God pretty much. Um, so then at this point, he says, in order to illustrate this, we shall produce some extracts from the literature. So then he has some citations uh, below uh, from their own scriptures indicating these foundational beliefs in their theology. So regarding educated Hindus, they tend to, de tend to believe very closely to what Muslims believe theologically. They often have a few points here and there which we disagree with, which are incorrect, which may even, may even be shirk. Uh, uh, but uh, they're finer details uh, at, at times. Uh, sometimes they're just blatantly wrong. Uh, sometimes they're finer details, which they're they're uh, just not as educated about. But generally, educated Hindus reject those building and, and spreading of these uh, idolatrous temples and, uh, and such. Some of them build meditation centers where they believe in monotheism and they just teach um, different beliefs and spiritual practices and such, which are uh, uh, quite different from building idolatrous temples where they give these offerings to a false god. Uh, the educated Hindus will, will, will reject such practices. So uh, here on this page, page 31, uh, there's a few interesting points. Here I've highlighted, he says, if we now pass from the ideas of the educated people among the Hindus to those of the common people, we must first state that they present a great variety. Some of them are simply abominable, but similar errors also occur in other religions. Now, even in Islam, we must decidedly disapprove of, for example, anthropomorphic doctrines of the Jabiriya sect. The Jabiriya believed that God had a corporeal body, and all Muslims reject this. Uh, you have to, to be a Muslim. Uh, and also the prohibition of the discussion of religious topics and, and such like, um, squelching people from being allowed to study and discuss the religion. Um, then he goes on, every religious sentence destined for the people at large must be carefully worded as the following example shows. Some Hindu scholar calls God a point, meaning to say thereby that the qualities of bodies do not apply to him. So he uses this idea of a, uh, of a point um, to kind of do like a tanzi, uh, in a sense, uh, within his religion uh, for those who are learning from him, to say that he has no body, right? God does not exist in time and space. Uh, it's a quality of created things, created beings. And then it says, now some uneducated man reads this and imagines God is as small as a point. And he does not find out what the word point in this sentence was really intended to express. So he didn't get a chance to study with the original author who had a teaching behind it, right? He just makes up his own idea and it's way off. And it says he will not even stop with this offensive comparison, but will describe God as much larger and will say he is 12 fingers long and 10 fingers broad. What on earth is this? You know, just making stuff up uh, 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 because he doesn't understand. And it says uh, God is above uh, such descriptions. 
Then he says further, if an uneducated man hears what we have mentioned, that God comprehends the universe so that nothing is concealed from him, he will at once imagine this comprehending is affected by means of eyesight, that eyesight is only possible means of an eye, and that two eyes are better than only one, and in consequence, he will describe God as having a thousand eyes, meaning to describe his omniscience. So again, big problem. God doesn't have physical eyes. Uh, he's all hearing, all seeing, all hearing, right? Nothing escapes him. Uh, he knows everything. Nothing escapes his knowledge. He, see, he hears and sees everything, and we don't ask how he does it. It's beyond our comprehension. He is infinite, right? But to describe him as having these physical things compared to a human, compared to the created things, this is called teshbih, likening God to his creation, and this is disbelief. This is kufr. He says similar hideous fictions are sometimes met with among the Hindus, especially among those castes who are not allowed to occupy themselves with science, of whom we shall speak hereafter. So some of the the castes, um, like there's four major castes and a, a plethora, numerous other castes uh, below them, who aren't allowed to even hear the Veda, who aren't allowed to study, who aren't allowed to learn, really. So um, they're stuck in being ignorant, and they make up all these ignorant ideas about God. So it shows the harms of a caste system, and that it leads to ignorance of God and ignorance of religion. It's very, it's a very sad thing. But I think the lesson is, I think the point here uh, we can take is that not all Hindus believe that stuff. If you talk to Hindus, discuss among them, many of them reject polytheism. Uh, and I hope that any of those who watch a video like this will realize that that is not your religion. It was made up. Uh, it's false. It's a lie. And I do not believe it. Here is a bit uh, uh, of a summary on cha of chapter nine on their caste system. Um, they have four of these different varna or colors. They call them castes. There's the Brahma, Kshatriya, Vaishya, Shudra. Uh, the Brahma, their religious priests, right at the top. Then the Kshatriya, number two. And the Vaishya and Sudra. So a few points here uh, um, is that, of course, below them, uh, there's a bunch of other lower castes defined by their employment, and they're terribly oppressed. Uh, there's no upward mobility between these. They say it's a sin uh, uh, to try and change castes no matter what you do, even if you're good at it. Um, and another point he makes is that these castes, like the Persians had a caste system as well, but he said it's all made up by kings to dominate their subjects and try to keep peace in their society by uh, then making up stories to convince people that they have to stay in their caste and not cause any social strife. You certainly don't rebel against the king, you know. It's very clearly made up by kings who just wanted to use this to control people and, give, and categorize people in his society and get them to accept where they are. It has nothing to do with reality. It's not based in revelation. God never said to do this. And um, I'd say it's uh, even sinful uh, to enforce this on a people. It's the opposite. I think it's, uh, it's it's very harmful. And the more you study it, you'll see how harmful it is. And anybody who just makes rational judgments reading about this can see how oppressive it is, uh, both spiritually, economically, uh, socially, in terms of your mental health, spiritual health, everything. Uh, it's very problematic. Here with the arrow on the left of chapter 12, there's an important point here I want to make. So the Brahmins read the Veda, but they don't understand its meaning. And they teach it by learn it and teach it by heart. And only few of them learn its explanation, and even less and an even smaller uh, group of them master the contents of it and its interpretation uh, to such a degree to be able to hold a theological disputation. So um, very few of the Brahmins of his time understood the Vedas, uh, let alone well enough to even discuss it and debate. And his, here's a, a, an important point in, in the second arrow. The Brahmins teach the Veda to the Kshatriyas. The latter learn it, but are not allowed to teach it, not even to a Brahmin. And the Vaishya and the Shudra are not allowed to even hear it, much less to pronounce and recite it. If such a thing can be proved against one of them, the Brahmins drag him before the magistrate and he is punished by having his tongue cut off. So that is uh, terrible, and it just shows how um, the education is a huge problem there, that very few people are educated religiously, um, and that certain castes uh, can't even he hear the Veda, let alone learn it, study it, master it. And the Brahmins are quite violent in enforcing this caste system 
um, which kind of just shows how it's, the society was clearly structured by a tyrannical king who, uh, you know, used these castes to <laughs> oppress uh, his subjects. Uh, it's quite terrible. Um, I think you can clearly tell why uneducated Hindus have such absurd beliefs because they're, they're not allowed to uh, pursue higher education. Yeah. So here's a verse of the Quran, which I think is relevant and important for people to understand, is that when these people call, or when any people call upon um, idols other than God, so what does that mean, dua? The dua is, is praying to and asking for help, asking for things and so on. That, that's what the word that is used here is, is the word dua, basically. Praying to. So it says in the Quran, instead of Allah, they only invoke female gods and they actually invoke none but a rebellious shaitan, cursed by Allah, who said, I will surely take hold of certain of a certain number of your servants. I will certainly mislead them and delude them with empty hopes. Also, I will order them and they will slit the ears of cattle and alter Allah's creation. And whoever takes Satan as a guardian instead of Allah has certainly suffered a tremendous loss. May Allah protect us from this. I mean, so uh, two notes here. One is that the pagans used to shape their idols as females and give them fem feminine names. Um, so that's why it says they only invoke female. Uh, gods, Ilda, Inath, and uh, uh, these females, uh, basically. And then it says, And they only call upon a rebellious shaitan. So what, when people build these uh, idols and, and, and call people to worship these idols, or say this idol lives here, you know, it's just satanic. It's the work of Satan. They're getting voices uh, uh, from satanic jinn who are telling them to do this, and they're listening to them and obeying them and spreading this evil. It's completely false. This is not even Hinduism. And it's, at, its, at its core, this is not Hinduism. It's false. It's made up. If you study Hinduism, they reject this. If you talk to educated Hindus, I have. And they all say there's no, these things are false. They're made up. They're not real. Um and Satan, and Satan uh, promises to mislead mankind. He's not your friend. He's not. Your, he is there to destroy you, right? And he talks about, I will order them, and they will slit the ears of cattle and alter Allah's creation. That means um, the slitting of the ears of cattle dedicated to idols was a superstitious practice before Islam uh, of the polytheists. That's what he's talking about. It's a specific practice. Um, and alter Allah's creation. So we've seen, we can see today people trying to alter Allah's creation uh, with certain movements and such in the world. Um, um, this is, it's satanic. It's, it's Satan tricking people uh, uh, to commit sinful acts and, and confusing them about what they're supposed to do and who they are. And then you forget God, you forget yourself, you forget who you are, and you, and you lose in the end. And Allah says, whoever takes Satan as a guardian, a waliyan, as a guardian instead of a law has certainly suffered a tremendous loss. That type of loss is where you lose everything. Say you invest hundred dollars, you get back twenty. That's that's a type of loss. But if you invest hundred dollars, you get back zero. That's the khus, That's the 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 khusra. Uh, uh, that is khusr. That is when you lose everything. So Allah says, you know, this is a big loss. Allah is al wadi. One of His names is al wadi, the guardian, the protector. Allah is your true guardian and protector. Only Allah can save you from the fire and enter you into the garden, and Satan wants you to commit the worst sins so that you enter the fire in the end. And another thing is Allah says, Allah cursed him uh, right here. Sorry, right here Allah says he cursed him and he cursed Satan. What does that mean? The da'ana. It means he is far from Allah's mercy and close to his punishment. That's what I've heard Dr. Shadi al Masri describe it as. Um, so that's what the it's translated as curse, the lana, uh, means that Allah may Allah protect us from his lana, um, it means that you are far from his mercy, close to his punishment. Um, and then he promises uh, to mislead us. He promises to mislead us. So when it comes to these, um, some of these Hindu practices, building temples with idols in them and telling people, come and worship the local god and, and give him, a, you know, food offerings and stuff, it's satanic. You know, there, there's usually, there's probably an actual jinn in there 
um, feasting on their offerings and 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 so on. You know, you're just inviting sh satanic entities to come into the area and into your this building thing, uh, which uh, you should want out, and you want to be protected from them. You want them to be far from you. They are your enemy. Uh, they will never help you. Uh, so be really careful with, with with falling into that error. And nowadays, uh, you know, education is widespread, fully accessible. So, you know. Uh, in the past, these uneducated Hindus, because of their castes, would spread polytheistic beliefs, but this is not the true religion. These are huge mistakes. They're lies. Um, and what greater lie is there than a lie against God? If I built a if I built a place, like a building, and I used it to spread lies, I guess you call it the media, but you know. <laughs> yeah. But uh you know, I use it to spread lies about you, your family, your parents, your children, your siblings, your business, your company you work for. Imagine I just built a place just to just to lie about you, about you. And, I, and I'm putting videos up everywhere, inviting people to, you know, just 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 lying to everybody. You could take me to court for slander and label, right? You could actually I could actually be um, arrested for this, for lying about other human beings. Uh, and, and, and probably most countries have these laws. In the USA, there's a law, you know, against slander on the bell, just lying. Well, what is worse than that? That's you, that's a human being. This is sinful. It's evil. But what's even worse is, uh, you know, the damage that 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 whatever those lies would come to you, they would be rectified. You know, you'll forget about that when you die. And in the end, it's not going to hurt you in, in your afterlife. But what if I lie to people about God? That can hurt you forever in the end. You know, that can hurt you forever. That can be a huge problem. That can land you in the fire if you believe those lies. So there's nothing worse than the one who goes around spreading lies about God. And if you call people to idolatry and to worshiping idols, that is the biggest sin there is. There's nothing worse than, uh, there's no sin worse than shirk. It's the only unforgivable sin. Uh, now that's after you know it's wrong. So now you know it's wrong. You know that even in the Hindu religion, they say it's wrong. Even Hindus themselves say it's wrong. It's completely wrong. It's made up. It's fabrication. It's a lie. Now you know you can never do it again. Number one, don't ever do it. Number two is that people who convert to Islam, they hear the truth. Yikes. If they did it, hey, you can be forgiven. The Shahada wipes out all previous sins, no matter how bad they were. All sins are gone when you take the Shahada. You get a completely fresh new start. God is merciful. He, uh, uh, don't underestimate his, uh his ability to redeem people, right? So always seek that redemption from him till your last breath. Always repent to him, turn to him, ask him for his forgiveness, okay? Um, um, turn away from that, that this evil, this idolatry, reject it. It's completely false. Um, um, know this and your intellect, use it correctly. Your intellect, when correctly used, it accepts the good from God and rejects evil and falsehood. So you accept the truth and reject falsehood. That's how you use your intellect, okay? And may Allah show us the truth as truth and the false as falsehood. And may we accept the truth and reject the falsehood. I mean. And finally, here are some implications, I think, of reading this book and studying it. One is that educated Hindus are monotheists and they reject polytheism. So Hinduism is rooted in monotheism. It's not a polytheistic religion at its, at its uh, essence. Polytheism is man-made and simply a manipulation of uneducated people. And the worst lie is a lie against God. That is the worst of lies. Hinduism, I mean, it's one thing if you lose your money in this world, that's a crime if you like steal money, right? But even worse is if you lose yourself to the fire in the next world. That is the ultimate loss. So that lie can cause you to lose yourself to the fire. If you believe and spread those lies, you work for Satan instead of for God, you can be in a huge problem when you die and you'll have huge regret because all the other stuff of this world, you'll forget about it. Your, your so-called friends or whatever, your money, your safety, all of that, only God gives you good if you lose his mercy and end and he gives you for the justice, anybody whom he treats with his justice to put them in the fire, he treats with his mercy, he puts them in the garden. So uh, these lies uh, uh, are the big lies. Uh, don't believe those.
Uh, so Hinduism has gone several stages of change through thousands of years. That's another point. Like there's the Vedic period, there's the Vedanta, there's the, then there's like the Gita, the epics and stuff. Uh, but the big point though, is that they have no revelation from God and their own scholars admitted this over a thousand years ago. Everything they have is the words of human beings. Some of it is true. Some of it is false. Some Hindu sects build temples, but have no idolatry involved. They just meditate and share knowledge. I have seen this. For example, the Brahma Kumaris meditation centers and many others, they actually interestingly believe that God is a point. So I believe that they also made a mistake in taking um, that point theology uh, uh, too literally. And, and that the point of it was to tell you God has no corporeal body. I think they took it literally that in believing and teaching that God is like a point of light that they focus and meditate on. But they don't have any, uh, to my knowledge, they don't have any idolatry and I've, I've visited one and met them um and talked to them and they said yeah they completely reject all idolatry they say there's no there's there's, there's, there's no idol there's no god there's no other gods that these things are all made up uh so many hindus will tell you this that it's all man-made uh some build temples with idolatry which is satanic and every hindu should reject such trickery and abuse of their own selves spirituality and religion and their neighbors, their society. It's a huge lie. Uh, uh, what a terrible thing. It's, it's one of the worst, it's like the worst thing you can ever do is to associate partners with God and then to spread such lies to other human beings. This is satanic work. It's the work of Satan. This is true. Uh, everybody will know this when they die. So be really careful with that. That's a big mistake. So I hope you found this reading useful. Um, if you have any valuable educated comments, I may be open to hearing them. I also have an article on my blog about Hinduism where I talk about the Vedas and, and the Vedanta and so on. You can read it and read some excerpts of their scriptures and also go through the different periods of uh, Hinduism. You may find it interesting and perhaps valuable, uh, inshallah. Um, so thanks for watching. I know it was long. I apologize. And may Allah keep us all upon Tawheed and the truth and maybe have a, a, a truthful end with him and a good end and die in his mercy. As-salamu alaykum wa barakatuh.